My name's Regan. I work for Anthony J. Lyon, Detective Bureau. They call me the Lion's Eye. Sunday at 8.30 and CBS brings you Jeff Regan, Investigator, starring Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery and suspense and adventure in tonight's transcribed story, They've Got More Than Coffee in Brazil. Her name was Irene Santino. The lady from Brazil, the lion called her. He figured it for an easy trace job. Something for missing persons. Only, uh, when we do them, the lion gets paid. Well, the program said it was simple. Except before we wound it up, there were a couple of added attractions. A doctor who didn't do any doctoring. A nurse with a built-in temperature. And a couple of blackouts that were meant to be permanent. And, uh, guess what? In that last part, I was supposed to be the star. Anyhow, it all began late last Monday. I was home. My boss, Anthony J. Lyon, knocked on my door. I opened it. And that's when I made my first mistake. Jeffrey, I'm glad I found you in. I'm just on my way home from the office. You could have kept on going. I'm out of bourbon. Oh, now, Jeffrey, I didn't come by just for that. You got anything else? Nope. All right, all right. As a matter of fact, I want your advice, Regan. Cut out starches and get some exercise. Yeah. What else? Yeah, what would you do if you traveled 10,000 miles just to see your sister and then couldn't find her? Um, I'd give up the search. You would? Why? I haven't got a sister. That's not what I'm talking about. You'd go to missing persons, wouldn't you? Sure you would. But if you knew your family in a foreign country would become greatly alarmed at this sort of notoriety, you'd look for your sister in another way. You, you'd hire a good private detective. Now, isn't that right? Come on, Fatso, get to the point. We have a new client. Her name's Irene Santino. She's from Brazil. Rio, fine family, Regan. Coffee. She's engaged the Lion Detective Bureau to locate her younger sister, Carmen. I'm no St. Bernard. You'll do till I can feed one. Oh, I know you've been working hard lately. But, Jeffrey, this is one of those occasions when I'm proud to be a part of our profession. We have an opportunity to help a young lady in desperate straits and at the same time secure goodwill from South America. Ever hear of the State Department? Of course I have. Yeah, but they can't do it all alone. It's up to individual citizens to take responsibility, too. And that's the only reason you want me to find her sister? Absolutely. Uh. Now, Miss Santino is taking an apartment at this address. Here, go see her, comfort her, let her know the Lion Detective Bureau and the United States of America will do everything possible to locate her lost sister. That all? That's enough. What'd she pay you? Two hundred dollars. Yeah. That's a lot of green to get in advance. She insisted. She's very anxious to find that girl. Well, watch out her check doesn't bounce. It won't. She paid cash. The $200 was already making a lump in the lion's coat, and I knew the next spot for it was his mattress. Well, maybe that's the reason he's a bachelor. I left him in my place and drove over to the address he'd given me. It was one of those Beverly Hills apartments with a long, glassy look. Irene Santino's apartment was on the second floor. She was a tall, brown-haired girl without a smile. She wore glasses. And when she talked, she sounded sad, like a banjo player with a paper pig. Thank you so much for coming over, Mr. Regan. I've been very upset all day. I just had to do something about Carmen. Your sister? Yes, my younger sister. She's the one I came here to see. Yeah, I heard. It's an awful vacant feeling. I thought she'd meet me at the airport and... And she wasn't there. And when I went to her address, we were very close. She's from Rio, too? Yes, of course. How's her English? Well, well, the same as mine. We were both educated in the United States. Where? Uh, back east, Vassar. You older than Carmen? Yes, two years. She's 25 now. Carmen left home a year ago, you see. She's always been very independent. And, well, I'm afraid something might have happened to her. Like what? Well, I don't know. Young girl, pretty, I don't know. And as I say, she's so independent. I received this letter from her a few days ago. It was the first word since she left home. Um, it came this way? Well, yes. No envelope? Oh, well, I threw that away. She wrote her address there at the end, and I didn't see any need for keeping the envelope. And, uh, she wasn't at this address. That's what frightens me. There isn't any such address. Yeah. What does your sister Carmen look like? 
Why, I gave her a snapshot to Mr. Lyne. Didn't he give it to you? Uh, he forgets things. Oh, no matter. I have another. Of course, it's old and not very good. I think it's right here in this suitcase. You'll, you'll pardon things coming all over, but I haven't had time to do any... Oh, here it is. Hmm. Right here. Ah, oh, she's blonde, huh? Well, a little lighter than mine. We're the same height, too. We used to wear each other's clothes. Oh, Mr. Regan, you will be able to find her, won't you? I don't think you want me to. You... Mr. Regan, are you trying to be funny? You hand me a snapshot so old it could be anybody and a letter that says nothing and you want me to turn up a blonde. But I thought those would be leads. She mentions the name of a doctor. I thought you'd Is uh, he the man? The man? She left home a year ago. She wasn't following the crops. I don't know what you're talking about. There was a man in it. If I'm going to do any good, I've got to have it all, lady. <sighs> all right. All right, there was a man. Yeah. His name was Frank Martin. I met him once in Mexico City. She thought she was in love with him. But he has nothing to do with it, Mr. Regan. I'm sure he has nothing to do with it. How do you know? Because I looked him up. He lives out on Laurel Avenue. You talked to him? No, but I... I, uh... I asked questions around. I'm completely satisfied he knows nothing about it. Look, if you'd see this doctor my sister mentioned... You want me to find your sister? Yes. But you don't want me to see this Frank Martin. I didn't say that. You didn't have to, lady. Okay. You get a report when I got something. Oh, um... There's one more thing. What's that? How long did you stop off on the way to shop in New York? What? What makes you think I'd do that? Labels. When you leave your clothes strewn around, labels show. There's no Saks Fifth Avenue in Rio. When I walked out, her mouth was wide open like she was trying to scream. Only nothing came out. I hung around the door outside for a minute to see if she'd use the phone. But when nothing happened... I looked up Frank Martin in the city directory and drove over to Laurel. A two-story apartment building, the color of a bride's blush. It was wrapped around a swimming pool, too small for people, too big for birds. Martin's name wasn't on the mailbox, so I tried the manager's door. Her voice sounded like a beer truck in low gear. Well, come on in, Pilgrim. You don't know me, do you? I just got here. I played the palace in 26. Oh, them was the days. Write it up, sell it the movies. Oh, them slobs. Central Casting ain't called me in four years. You got a card? Afra, S.A.G., and the Musicians' Union. I play the French horn. And none of them call me. Now, I figure it's television. No union yet, but... Um, by the way, what are you doing here, buddy? Looking for a man named Frank Martin. Now, look, I like Frank. If you got trouble, stay away from him. He bruises easy. And you're just a mother to him. He's a nice laddie. Remember what I tell you, huh? Sure. Come on, I'll show you. Thanks. That's him. Yeah, he stays in one key. All the time. A low one. Sounds like. Second door on the right. Thanks. See ya, Pilgrim. Come on in. It's unlocked. Your name Frank Martin? Yep. Who wants to know? My name's Regan. I'm a private investigator with Lion Detective Bureau. Wrong steer, Gumshoe. I don't need one. I'm not looking for work. I'm looking for you. What'd you say it was, Regan? Yeah. R-E-G-A-N? Regan? Regan. Just wrote that one. Cute, huh? I'm, um, looking for a friend of yours. A second ago, you were looking for me. Now you're looking for a friend of mine. Frank Martin never had a friend. Who are we talking about? Carmen Centino. Oh. How is Carmen these days? I don't know. But you said you were a detective. I did. You sound like an amateur. You sound like a guy with a chip on his shoulder. I sound like a lot of things. You trying to get tough, baby? The figures why your name isn't on the mailbox. Yeah? Nobody would ever write you. I'll, uh, skip that, Regan. Who hired you to do what? Her sister's in town. She's looking for Carmen. Didn't know Carmen had a sister. What else? You're the boyfriend. Where is she? <laughs> yeah, the boyfriend. That's real good. Let me tell you what Carmen's like, Regan. Eyes just right. Hair just right. Everything just right. Everything just right. Wait till you see her in a bathing suit. That's something, brother. She, um, isn't wearing one in this picture. Bad picture, Regan. You got no idea how bad. Hardly looks like her, like she is. Ever met him like that? Sometimes. About a year ago, I was sitting right here, and the phone rings. It's Carmen. 
You know, we talked about... Football. Marriage. We were going to be married, Regan, only she decided all of a sudden she didn't want it. Just like that. It was her idea. I haven't seen her since. You try? Once. She moved. No forwarding address, that's all. <sighs> Makes good story. But you don't believe it. Now, let me tell you the reason we broke up. It's a dilly. My hearing's good. Well, you heard about the happy couple that the guy keeps getting loaded, can't lay off? This is different. Big switch. Carmen. Yeah. Yeah, Carmen. That why she was seeing a doctor? Carmen seeing a doctor? Look, why, why don't you get out of here? Why? Because we don't like each other. The sister thinks something might have happened to Carmen. She's scared. Some of us are scared part of the time, and then somebody makes a lot of noise looking for somebody, then everybody gets scared. You scared, Regan? Yeah. Oh? About what? Carmen Centino? I might be looking too late. Well, what he gave me filled in the cast. But the plot wasn't getting any clearer. So I looked up the doctor Carmen had mentioned in her letter. His name was Kingston, and the only address was a place out in Encino. It was a ranch house spilled all over the top of the hill like whipped cream. Figured he was getting over ceiling for his pills. I parked my car by the gate and followed the flagstones up to the front door. When I pressed a button, I heard something that sounded like chamber music. A blonde girl wearing a red dress that must have been riveted for her. Opened the door about the middle of the second chorus. Well, oh, I like blue serge. It has an effect on me. <laughs> it's the only thing in the closet. You fill it out nice, but you don't look sick. I want to see the doctor anyway. Come in and we'll talk about it. My, you are tall, Mr. Regan. Regan. Who are you? Florence Nightingale? I hold the doctor's stethoscope. My name's Vivian Lytell. Mind telling him I'm here? Yes, he's busy. So are you, lady. He'll be busy quite a while. He just opened another bottle. Well, I'm right on time. You're so eager. Oh, wait. Rex isn't sociable like me. He drinks alone. He gets more that way. Let me entertain you. Easy, Angel. I don't know how to fix a fracture. I've already got a man who can do that. I want one with brains. What's the matter with the doc? He keeps his in a bottle. Hasn't used him for a long time now. He's done all right. This? <laughs> He'd be selling papers if his wife hadn't left him a good insurance policy. What's the matter? Don't you like his money? Oh, don't get me wrong. It's just that a girl has feelings, too. Yeah. They show. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I met you. We're going to have some nice afternoons. But you work for a living. I got lots of free time. Besides, I should have at least one outside interest. Keep looking. You'll find one. You smile good, but you talk nasty. I only came to see Kingston. There's the phone. Call and make an appointment. Now get out. Uh, Vivian, about this... Oh, I didn't know you had company. I'll talk to you another time. Just a minute, Doctor. This is Mr. Regan. He's your company, but he doesn't have a business card. Look, Mr. Regan, I'm no longer in practice just doing a search on my own. I have all the medical equipment I can use, and I turned all my patients over to another doctor. I so... know one you forgot. Oh? Well, tell me who. Carmen Centino. Carmen Centino. Go ahead, Vivian. I'll speak to Mr. Regan. Watch yourself, Rex. He doesn't know how to be nice. It'll only take a minute. I'll crack some ice. You'll need a drink. Mm. Very fine, nurse. Yeah. It's a nice uniform. Working on my own, we're very casual. You said I had a patient named Carmen uh, Sen... Uh, what was it? Carmen Centino. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Mr. Regan. Who told you that? I read about you in a letter. Must have been another king. There's only one with a license. Are you a relative of this girl? Friend. You're a detective, aren't you? Yeah. Want to show me your files someday? Why not today? This way. I keep them right here in my lap. Help yourself, Mr. Regan. Thanks. Want a drink? It's too early. You don't mind if I have one? Your house. Yeah. <clears throat> Find anything? Not under Centino. She could have used another name. That's possible. When was I supposed to have treated her? Oh, about a year ago, according to this letter. Yeah. This is her picture. Mm hmm. No. I've never treated anyone who looks like that. Sure. Positive. What was her illness? Might have had something to do with that stuff you're drinking. 
They, um, die from it sometimes. I see. You can't see it from this window, but just over the hill, my wife's buried. I had special permission from the county to bury her on my property. She was a great comfort to me when she was alive. I haven't been the same since she passed away, and... Well, that's why I'm no longer in practice. I didn't ask for that. But you did, with your eyes. You're a strange man. Do you enjoy making a living this way, prying into other people's lives, searching for what's best left alone? Is he still here, Rick? Yes, Vivian, but he's just leaving. You can find your way. Yeah. Goodbye, Blue Surge. You were a real disappointment. Don't give up. I'll be back. Don't bother, Regan. The doctor will be out. The whole thing looked phony, like a fan dancer in long underwear. But when I left the two of them, I was beginning to get an idea, just beginning. I walked over the side of the hill to look at the grave. It was there, all right, like he said. Irene Kingston, 1922-1948. Maybe that explained it. Maybe it didn't. I was remembering those New York labels I'd seen on Irene Centino's clothes when I left there and looked up a friend of mine in the CAA. He checked into it and told me nobody named Centino had come in from Rio on any flight last week. And the immigration people didn't have a passport or a visa record on her either. I was home thinking about all this when my phone began ringing. It was Irene Centino. She did all the talking. I tried to get you at your office, Mr. Regan, but no one answered her. I, I had to speak to you. What about? I found Carmen. Yeah? Rather, Carmen found me. I feel sort of foolish now, calling you people in and all that. Well, she came right to my apartment, can you imagine? She's been looking for me. Uh, what about her address? Oh, that was another silly thing. Only with a mistake. She's not very good at details. Please thank Mr. Lyon for his kindness. And, uh, Mr. Regan. Yeah? It's all confidential. I wouldn't want any of this to get to the wrong people. You know some of the wrong kind? Doesn't everyone? Well, goodbye. Oh, uh, Jeffrey, uh, you run any expenses on the Centino thing? No. Good, good, it's all over. Well, how do you know? She just... It spoke... just came from missing persons. There's a cop there named Perini. Got an eye like an eagle. Talk sense. Uh, had that other picture of the Centino dame with me. He took one look at it and opened up a file. What kind of file? Dead and unclean. What do you mean? The county buried her. Carmen Centino's been dead a year. <laughs> This is CBS, and you are listening to They've Got More Than Coffee in Brazil, tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Well, there were enough angles to write a new geometry book. Irene Centino gave me a picture and a letter and started me digging for her sister, Carmen. I meet a guy with a piano and a doctor with a bottle. Everybody talks, but nobody says anything. And then Irene calls me off, says she found her sister. Only the lion walks in with a different version. Missing persons say Carmen Centino's holding down a spot in the county cemetery. Well, I figured somebody was having nightmares. I didn't say anything to the lion and went down to the Hall of Records. There was a little guy sitting at the desk in vital statistics. His fingernails were dirty and he was reading a dictionary. He must have been at a good part because uh, he looked mad when I interrupted him. We're not on a bus. Quit shoving. I want some information. I'm a public servant. That's what I'm here for. What kind of information? Get to the death files, will you? You're a morbid guy. We got a lot of stuff on births and marriages. Ask me something about that. girl named Carmen Centino died about a year ago. Tell me what from. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, how do you spell it? Just like it sounds. Uh, Centino, huh? Uh, Sabatini, Sanaki, Sanford. That's what happened to old Sandy. Hmm. No wonder I ain't seen him around. Come on, get with it, will you? Uh, uh, oh, uh, here it is. Um, Centino. Date of death, 15 October, 1948. Cause of death? Alcoholic poisoning. Yeah. How'd you get it? Never mind. Who signed the certificate? Uh, uh, Rex J. Kingston, M.D. Okay. Here's one more for you. Look up Irene Kingston. The doc's wife? Look it up. Okay, okay. Uh, King, Kingsley. Here. Kingston, Irene. 13 October, 1948. Cause of death? You guessed it again, the same. Alcoholic poisoning. Hey, this guy couldn't keep a patient. Well, 
I'd filled it in. I could see the plot, but I wasn't sure of the ending. So I didn't waste any time getting over to Irene Santino's place. But I wasn't fast enough. The door was halfway open when I got there. All the company had left, but Irene was still around. She was sitting there looking at the phone. Like it was all she had to think about. <laughs> Mr. Regan. <laughs> What's so funny? Everything. Everything, Mr. Regan. <laughs> oh, excuse me for not getting up. I didn't expect you. <laughs> I told you I found my sister, didn't I? Yeah, you told me, but you didn't tell me she was dead. <laughs> I didn't even tell you that I haven't got a sister, did I? <laughs> did I? Come on, lady, give it to me. What are you talking about? <laughs> Look, this little red spot on my arm. Doesn't look like much, does it? But just wait, Mr. Regan. You just wait. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I found a doctor on the floor below. He grabbed his black bag and went to work on it. She quieted down to a slow inside giggle, then went out altogether. The doctor got hold of an ambulance and carted her off to a hospital. They just wheeled her out the door when the lion showed up. Hey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, did I see an ambulance out front? That's right. Your client was in it. What? Yeah, somebody stuffed her full of something that made her giggle. I don't understand all this at all. I stopped by home to change to my dark suit so I could come by and bring Miss Centino the news of her sister's death, and what do I walk in? You can save your tears, fatso. She didn't come from Brazil, and she wasn't rich. That woman gave me $200 cash. There was nothing unreliable about her. We had a contract. You can use it for confetti. Now, see here, Jeffrey. Look, look. Lion, look at this picture. Carmen Centino, I have one just like it. All right, draw some glasses on it. Add about six or seven years. I don't understand you, Jeffrey. We're talking business, and all at once we're playing games. When I came to see her tonight, she wasn't wearing her glasses. She looked a lot like the dame in this picture. Of course she did, naturally. That's her own sister. She never had a sister. Never had a sister? Then who did the county bury? That's what I'm going to find out from a guy named Rex Kingston. I had a feeling you'd be back. I built a fire. I forgot the marshmallows. Come on in. I'm not mad anymore. I'm still looking for your doctor. Let me take care of you. I have a way with men. Didn't we do all this once before? Oh, it's night now. You can ask me some questions. I know some swell answers. I'll bet. How do you like your drink? Your way? That's better. Now... Let's have a nice, quiet evening. Just you and me. I want to see him. There's been a famine of men like you. You don't look underfed. I said I want to see him. <sighs> oh, all right. We could have had such a nice evening. Rex? What is it? Mr. Regan's here again. Yes, yes. Hello, Regan. Didn't I tell you I'd be out? Yeah, you told me that, but you didn't tell me what I wanted to know. I had to go to vital statistics to get that. You... What? You don't have anything in your files about Carmen Centino, but you signed a death certificate. Now, you get this, Regan. You saw my files once, and I don't have to open them again to anyone who comes here without a warrant. And you haven't got one. But I know where I can get one. When I go to the city attorney's office and tell them what I've got, they'll have somebody out here to exhume that grave on the hill. What do you mean, Regan? Irene Kingston died two days before Carmen Centino of the same thing. Dr. Kingston signed both certificates. He collects on his wife's insurance. Only, I don't think his wife really died. I think that extra grave up on the hill is window dressing. And if my wife didn't die, Regan, where is she now? I don't know. She could be at a downtown hospital, posing under the name of Irene Centino. It was a shot in the dark, but it brought results. Kingston swung a lamp base around the connected on the side of my head. When I came to, I was in a white room, back of the house. I tried to move my head, but it felt like a grand piano. Nothing else worked either, so I just lay there. Pretty soon somebody began putting something damp on my face, and I began to see better. Vivian was standing there with Kingston. He looked sick, like an ostrich with a sore throat. He had a needle in his hand. I... I can't. You can do it all right, Rex. Go ahead. That's the same treatment you tried to give Irene? You should have stayed out, Regan. I wanted one more look at you, baby. I hate to see the nice ones go, but it'll be all over in a minute. All right, Rex. Give me a drink, Vivian. Gotta have a drink. It won't help. I found Irene in time. She's gonna live. 
He's going to talk. Go ahead, Rex. Give it to him. Then we'll clear out. But Irene's still alive. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. You'll do better this time. I can't. I can't. Go ahead. No. No, I won't. I said go ahead or I'll shoot you, Rex. I'll shoot you if you don't. No, you no. don't. It's all over, Vivian. It's all over. Vivian had the gun, but Kingston was too much for her. All of a sudden, it began going off. Vivian started to look pale. And then she went down, slow and easy. Oh, you boy. She deserved it. That's what you're going to tell the state? Regan, is Irene really going to live? That's what the doctor says. Good, good, Regan. No, no, don't, don't try to move. I gave you a shot of preparatory solution. You won't be able to move for another hour. I suppose I ought to run. You won't get far. I know. But listen to me. Irene, she's my wife. She's innocent of all this. When you tell the police the real story... I haven't got it all. You had enough. It started with Carmen Santino. She stumbled in one night. She was very ill. She dropped dead before I could do anything for Alcohol? her. Alcohol? Yes. But before she died, she kept talking about a man named Martin. Who lives over on Laurel. Yes, I was going to get in touch with him. But I had a better idea. She looked a great deal like my wife, Irene. It was quite remarkable. The insurance. Yes. Irene didn't want to do it, but she loved me, so she finally disappeared. I used one body for two death certificates and buried an empty box up on the hill. I was supposed to join Irene later. I see. Vivian. Yes. Vivian came along. I was drinking one night and she found out the truth. I was trapped. It would have stayed that way if Irene hadn't hired you. And I was supposed to scare you with that story about a sister in Brazil. It worked, too. That guy Martin said, somebody gets scared... And then, yeah. Regan, can you hear me? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Stuff's making me sleepy. It'll wear off. I'm going now, Regan. See that Irene gets a fair shake? I'll try. He picked up a bottle and started out the door. He didn't even look down at Vivian's body on the floor. I tried to move... Like he said, nothing worked. It was two more hours before I could get to the phone and call homicide. It was two more days before I talked to the lion. Sure, sure, I'm sending it right over. Yes, of course, uh, of course. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, my boy, how are you feeling? Better? Well, the fog's gone out of my head, if that's what you mean. Otherwise, I feel lousy. Oh, don't take it so hard, my boy. All in a day's work. Besides, there's the brighter side. <laughs> yes, indeed. Like what? Well, for one thing, they got that Dr. Kingston. He only got as far as Las Vegas. Crime doesn't pay, Jeffrey. Crime just does not pay. Doesn't, huh? What's this? Uh, now, wait a minute. Give me that. Application. Consolidated insurance. It's nothing, I tell you. You mean to tell me we're going to try to collect a reward? We exposed an insurance fraud. Every insurance company pays a little something for that. We had expenses. You don't know how hard I've worked on this, Jeffrey. Yeah, take it back. Well, what's the matter? You look like it's something illegal. Crime does not pay. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is directed and transcribed by Sterling Tracy and stars Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. Tonight's script was by E. Jack Newman. Original music is by Dick Arant. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>